Okay, so welcome back to Innovating with Capella. Uh, today I'm going to continue on the reverse engineering with Capella topic. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is why would you want to reverse engineer uh, and what the approach would be uh, to do that. Uh, and then follow, and then follow, I'll talk about the add-ons that would be required. Uh, so in, this, in the objective of this section, we'll kind of cover these topics. Uh, the first thing is, uh, and then when we get into the basically the approach, we're going to talk about how we kind of capture the existing system, and then the other thing we're going to do is introduce a, essentially a new capability to the system. Uh, the, the main reason why uh, is basically system engineering. Uh, the tool like Capella is used for model-based systems engineering, but in general, it is all about systems engineering, uh, which is defined as a, a transdisciplinary integrative approach to enable a successful realization, use, and retirement of engineered systems. And it's using the principles and concepts of and scientific, technological, and management methods. This is what system engineering is, kind of a big set of words. Uh, that, is the def that is the definition from NCOSI. Uh, but what we're going to do is focus on, well, what does it give you? And system engineering focuses on these topics. These are also from, uh, from the NCOSI uh, website. And so uh, first of all, uh, and then I want to see how that lines up with Arcadia. So the first part of it is, uh, th uh, it is that it defines actual and anticipated customer needs and operational concepts and required functionality. So it definitely does that. That's very much part of the operational analysis phase and even to some degree the system analysis phase. The next thing it does is it provides you uh, an appropriate lifecycle model. It gives you a process approach. It very much has a process approach because of the operational system analysis, logical, physical, and in product breakdown structure that you get with the Arcadia methodology. So that's covered also uh, with the Arcadia method. Uh, next, it gives you a way to, to really generate and evaluate alternative solutions. Uh, and it does that because it allows you to separate the problem space from the solution space. So those are all good things. So I can go and develop a solution independent of the problem. Uh, and then I can explore how that solution meets the needs uh, of, the, of the problem space. Uh, next, it uh, allows me to synthesize my design to get it quite detailed as far as how I'm going to deliver capabilities across the system. And that delivery of those capabilities across the system can be used to drive not, not only verification of components, but also validation of the entire system to make sure and ensure that it meets the needs of the user. Um, and then uh, last of all, is it identifies the role that parts and how they play in the system with a great amount of detail, uh, really to how much you want to go to it, uh, and how those behaviors are delivered with those components. Uh, and overall, the, the system performance is covered by the chains of functionality that you build through the system. And we saw a lot of this with uh, the, the solar charger model uh, in the previous part of the course. So, so in summary, reverse engineering makes sense because you could, when you reverse engineer, you're able to use that as a starting point for systems engineering. Uh, and it ties a lot of these things together that you would need uh, for system engineering. Uh, another view of it I'd like to show is that if you've gone, ever gone through a system engineering curriculum, uh, and I have you know, gone through one uh, when I went for a, a master's degree at, uh, at Penn State University, we kind of covered all these things in the curriculum, things such as project management, requirements management, systems thinking, simulation, optimization, risk, risk management, and even team dynamics and communications. And an Arcadia Capella model will help in all those areas uh, because you have something to manage a project against. You have an architecture and components that are coming online. Uh, you have something to map requirements against. Um, you have uh, something that can be used as kind of a dashboard into simulation so that you're working with. So all these things uh, that you get with the Arcadia Capella model will actually help enforce good system engineering uh, uh, of a product and of, of a system. Now, how do we get started? So I guess, how do we start with this uh, working with an existing system? Well, one thing we can know is that the, the Arcadia method is divided up into all these phases. So one thing we can do is that stakeholders and needs around the stakeholders, uh, that information can be gathered from uh, existing materials. In this case, I'm gonna be using sales documentation for that. Uh, next thing is that you can get system functions and capabilities. Again, some product descriptions uh, can support that. Uh, the other part of it is, is that you have the physical uh, NEPBS content 
that content there can very easily be uh, gathered from uh, some of the supporting materials that comes with a kit, like we're talking about uh, with this uh, uh, little uh, robot car uh, kit. And then the last part uh, is that you have uh, behavior and behavior information can come right from data sheets uh, on things that are hardware devices or it can come from the software code. So you can get information around that detail uh, quite easily also uh, from it. And you know, kind of graphically, some of the things that we're going to be using here, uh, we're going to be using the information from the sales site and descriptions of the product. Uh, we're going to be going into uh, files of information. Some stuff will come right from the user manual. Uh, other things will come from uh, tech manuals and, and data sheets on it uh, of the product. Now, the other thing we're also going to use in this example and I'm going to use is that I actually have an existing model of a system that I'd done a few years ago of an older product. Uh, one thing I didn't, reason why I didn't use the older product is I actually had to upgrade it to get some of the, the behaviors and, and to experiment with some of the concepts I wanted to experiment with this little robot car. Uh, and uh, we'll be tweaking the model quite a bit from, from this existing model, but it'll, it's something that I can use as a resource as we're going through this uh, and I can actually show and, and depict. And, and in that model, we actually follow, I actually followed this approach where I actually developed a lot of the fun the physical content uh, first and and basically created kind of an overview of the system here uh, with it here's the kind of that physical component view that I was just showing I actually started working on some of the behavior content in this particular one we actually had to change the I actually had to change the ECU to a different ECU that had an, an inertial measurement unit built into it <clears throat> this, the environment we're going to be using now already has that uh, in it, so we'll be able to do things with it uh, and introduce some capabilities that I think will be fun to kind of showcase how you how you would do that uh, with the model. Uh, other uh, interesting parts of the model that we'll get into is like how the behaviors are mapped to things like the drive systems. And uh, this was a, a, a view of it, of the model I had built before, but I think I'm gonna do some things a little different than what I did in this particular model, uh, mainly trying to get it to keep it a little more abstract. You know, one thing I don't want to do is have the system model uh, be <clears throat> including information that should actually stay in other disciplines. Uh, and then once what we're going to do is once we uh, kind of reverse engineer the system, <coughs> we're going to introduce a new capability. And the new capability we're going to introduce is one of a closed loop control. So we're actually going to introduce this capability and it's gonna be slightly different. This one here is using a Bluetooth interface through a, a smartphone. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce that and, and into the system and use some of the, the actual the, out of the box hardware for doing that. <clears throat> and uh, the, with a closed loop control is a pretty advanced level of functionality. It basically keeps the vehicle running in, a, a, in steering correctly in the correct direction. Um, the motors that are in this car are very inexpensive motors. And therefore, they do. Uh, they're all a little different. And when you put the, put the vehicle on a different surface, you're going to get uh, it running and not possibly in straight lines when you tell it to go forward. So what we're going to introduce is closed loop control around the steering. And uh, here's an example of what that closed loop control looks like. You can see on the right, it's with it. And you'll see that the vehicle works in fairly straight lines uh, when you tell it to turn. Uh, and, and do things with it. It's because of the fact that it's actually uh, using the IMU uh, to close the loop on uh, position and on a rot the rotational direction. Uh, so we're actually uh, doing a couple integrations there and basically uh, making the, the vehicle uh, hold the course on a particular angle uh, when it's driving. And then that's then being turned into powers to the wheels. So it should be a fun example to kind of walk through uh, also showcase some other things of how you could basically tie into other modeling tools uh, with it and extract information. That's the uh, some of the uh, leads to some of the other um, add-ons we're going to be using to, to support that. So kind of in summary, the, the capability we're going to be adding is this IMU uh, closed loop uh, steering, um, how it will be invoked and what its results will be kind of a, at the system level. Uh, we're going to show how it gets decomposed down to the systems and the domains, and then eventually how that gets decomposed down to the components and the respective behaviors of the components. Now, to do this, we're going to basically use uh, uh, Capella, uh, but we are going to incorporate a couple add-ons. Um, 
Here's some of the add-ons that I anticipate using uh, at this point in time. We're going to use some uh, HTML documentation generation keep, uh, add-on that allow us to generate a web page of the content. Uh, we're going to be using uh, the requirements viewpoint uh, and we'll capture some, some information in requirement format. Uh, also showcase off some, uh, again, some things we can do with Python to basically bring contents of requirements into the model. Uh, the other part we're going to use is Python for Capella. Uh, I'll plan on using that to help populate some of the model content, such as descriptions. I've got a nice little script that works with ChatGTP to help uh, populate that. And then finally, we're going to look at using filtering. Uh, one of the things I did notice with the model is that the, we found out that the I found out that the model did have some uh, real life problems of not be, of the this is the the robot car. Uh, 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 a uh, to, uh, robot toy uh, found out that uh, there were some part uh, problems and acquisition problems, so they actually substituted in some parts. So what we'll probably do is uh, represent that in the model into in some format, so we can and then tie that to the filtering tool. Um, though we'll see if it's uh, necessary or not, but I think it uh, it would be fun to play around with that. And then finally, uh, the model will be managed in GitHub as opposed to managing it in the uh, a shared drive on uh, Google, as I had done in the past. I've been using uh, the eGit implementation that's incorporated into Capella for uh, interacting with GitHub. Uh, and this is the location of where those models will be. Uh, the models are being in worked on in a Capella 5.2 format, not 6.0. So you will have to upgrade if you want to uh, use it in the 6.0 uh, when you pull a copy of a model. Uh, and you'll f find uh, right now that there is the solar charger uh, model has actually been stored up on GitHub. So in summary, that's the stuff we covered today. Uh, I look forward to having you join me in the future uh, uh, sessions. Uh, stay tuned and please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much.